Come in, come in. I hear that your friend Maivia has, has had another big success in Paris. My dear Sulsa, you would not have me pander to a swindler such as he. Maivia. Last time I encountered Maivia was in Paris, in the music shop of Schlesinger. Was at one time Schlesinger's, now owned by a much more pronounced type of Hebrew, one Brandis. And while I made conversation with dear old Monsieur Henri, the only person left at all friendly and welcoming, do you know Maya Beer hid from me? But I winkled him out, brought him to face me there. Maya Beer, master of melodious moonshine, forced to come out of his lair, stuttering and stammering, professing false goodwill, and here it came, here it came. His assumption that I was in Paris to seek, as it were, my fortune. Maya Beer was always willing to help, and did so often. But, like everyone else who helps Richard, they are eventually repaid with scorn and derision. Oh! Which assumption I quickly dispel by assuring him that the thought of having anything done, or underdone, or overdone in Paris was odious to me. But, whines my beer, Liszt has published such a brilliant article about you, we all read it. Ah, replied I. It had not really occurred to me that the enthusiastic devotion of a friend should be regarded as speculation. But, quoth he, and here the man lies bare, the thirty pieces of silver chink. But the article created a sensation in Paris. You must surely seek to make profit out of it by following it up with something. Profit? I told him that there were greater occupations for my mind when the whole world seemed to be in turmoil and reaction. But. A great butterer is my beer. But what do you expect to get out of it? Are you set to write scores for the barricades? Whereupon I told him it was not in my mind to write any scores at all, which took the ground straight from under him and laid him on it. My beer, the my beer Greek, twittering Nibelungs, maggots deep in the flesh, feeding on the sweet, pretty, fleshy confection that is Paris, a blood cake iced and spattered with silver and gold, pretty tunes, music for brothels. Deep inside the cake, they twitter and wriggle and copulate and kiss and suck, growing bellies that are fat, shoulders broad enough to carry the ponderous crucifixion of fame, victors of the fame game. I, Maya Beer, salute you with five acts and a ballet decollete called an opera. Bravo! An opera by Maya Beer. The world hangs hushed on every nauseous note. Stands transfixed in awe, titles promising seriousness, hollow titles rattling with arias and melodramatic arpeggios, empty rhodomontade titles like The Prophet, a prophet who tells one nothing. Maya Beer entitles his grand opera The Prophet and it prophesies nothing!